Welcome. This screencast is meant as a reference for you as you work through your experiment on elastic forces. Uh, do follow the instructions that are laid out in your lab guide, but again, if you have difficulty, referring back to this might help you. The experiment is broken into two parts. The first part, you're focusing on the spring constant and the elastic limits. So some tips for you as you work through that. Your measurement will be done of force and extension. You'll be using a force sensor and a smart pulley to do that. And when you have your data, you'll be analyzing the graphs to determine where Hooke's law applies and what the elastic limits are. Now remember Hooke's law, given by this equation here, Fe stands for the elastic force. K stands for the spring constant, which is measured in newtons per meter. And the spring constant is a measure of how stiff or strong the elastic material is. K, sorry, X stands for the extension. That's not the length, but how much it's actually stretched or been compressed by, and that's measured in meters. And notice your units would cancel here, leaving you with the value for the force in newtons. Now some tips as you collect your data in setting up the equipment. Um, you, take, you can see the equipment here on the right hand side. Pull the string over the smart pulley, and then as you pull with the force sensor, both the force and the extension will be measured and displayed on the graph as you see there. Your task is then to try to identify the linear region. So if we zoom in on the graph and look a little more closely, when you apply your linear fit, um, you're going to see it veers from the curve in several places. Pay attention to the precision at the top next to the slope, in this case plus or minus 2.1. That's a fairly significant um, error. So as you highlight your data points, you'll be able to see the linear fit based on what you've highlighted, and you can see where the straight line either touches or does not touch the straight line that you've got. As you experiment with it, you'll be able to reduce your precision and get a much better result. Uh, in this case, we can get down below 0.3, in this case 0.26 uh, newtons per meter for the precision in our slope. So this would be a very nice linear region where the elastic band would behave in a predictable way. The edges of that uh, are called the elastic limits, and that would be the maximum extension or maximum force you could, you could apply shown here and the minimum extension or the minimum force where Hooke's law would begin to apply in some predictable way. Those elastic limits are really useful in um, applying these objects or using these objects in any device, some sort of machine. Let's say it has to open or close a lever or something. If you were to apply a force beyond the elastic limit, um, you would end up damaging the elastic band and changing its properties. Below the minimum elastic limit, it wouldn't behave in necessarily a predictable way. So those are very useful in terms of engineering going forward. So in our case, the one that I used, the uh, slope came out to be approximately 38 newtons per meter, and that would be the spring constant for this elastic. Now just one other tip to make sure you get uh, some really quality data. Make sure before you collect data that the elastic is extended but not stretched. So if you look closely in the video here, you can see where the rubber band is just suspended there. We put a tiny bit of tension, just enough to extend it, but not actually stretch it before we begin collecting data. So try to set things up that way before you go ahead. Also make sure you're not going beyond the limits of force that your force sensor can withstand. Again, follow the instructions in your lab guide. It explains that for you. The second part of the experiment focuses on the elastic potential energy stored in the rubber band. Uh, so in this case, recall that the uh, potential energy is equal to the work done by a force. In this case, the force is the elastic force, and D would be the uh, distance that the elastic band is extended. So we're looking at a plot of force versus distance. So if we had one that matched the ideal elastic, not the one we used in the experiment, but if it was perfect, it would extend right back to the origin as shown here. The area underneath the graph would be equal to the force times the distance, um, in this case shown in blue. That would be the potential energy stored within the elastic. Now the shape we're dealing with here is a triangle, and the area of a triangle would be one half times the base times the height. So again, we're focusing on the area underneath the graph, so if we show that expression, the potential energy would equal one-half times the base times the height. 
and our base and our height are represented by F, E, and X. So X is our extension, that would be the base of the triangle, and the elastic force would be the height of the triangle. So we're dealing with the base times the height. Because Hooke's law applies, the elastic force can be replaced with kx. So kx times x gives us kx squared. So for the triangular shape that we've got, um, the expression of the potential energy is equal to 1 half kx squared would work. For those of you who are taking calculus, we can derive this for any particular function where we take the integral of the elastic force um, over the extension from 0 to x. So those of you who follow the integral calculus, you can see that we end up with the same solution over here on the right hand side k over 2x squared is the same as 1 half kx squared. So the special case that we were looking at with the triangle turns out that to work for all situations. So in summary then, if you're trying to find the elastic potential energy, it is equal to 1 half times the spring constant times the extension squared. And essentially you're looking at the triangular shape underneath the ideal plot for Hooke's Law. So hopefully that helps. Follow the instructions in the lab. Um, and as you get to the error analysis, there is a second video sequence coming up um, that may help you with your precision calculations. Come, come on! Hey.